My name's Lawrence Gunther. I'm a professional angler, outdoor writer, podcaster, blogger, filmmaker, and just lover of the outdoors. I was first diagnosed blind when I was eight years old, but I was only missing my central vision. It wasn't until my early 20s that I became functionally blind. I was 25 years old when I got my first dog. His name was Wicked, a black lab, beautiful dog. Had him for 10 years. Having that dog meant I could keep my job, I could go to school, I could take night classes and day classes, I could get around, I was losing my mobility. And to have a dog again meant getting my mobility back. It was fantastic. Since Wicked, I've had a bunch of dogs over the years. It's been 33 years since then. And now I have no dog. Losing Moby uh, last September was really tough, you know. It's like your arm. You don't really think about it as being separate from yourself. It's just there all the time. And then you lose it. It's like losing your arm. It's, it's not easy. What would he do when he came home from work every day with Dad as soon as he hit that landing? He used to jump around. And then what? He used to howl and say, oh, we're home. <laughs> He really did, didn't he? Every day. <laughs> every day. He'd, every get up, he'd, day. he'd get up on that landing, turn around, look at me, and go, Whoo! like, job done. Yeah, we're home. <laughs> Yay. Harness off. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I miss that. All the kids, all my family, they were all there when Moby passed, you know? It, it's important that they are part of that whole circle of life and that they understand that, you know, not a, nothing in lasts forever. It's it's um, it's important that they learn that lesson too. But in the end, though, I I was with Moby by myself and, and with the vet, and I was whispering in his ear, just we're going fishing, buddy. You know, not letting him hear any stress in my voice, so he would go off feeling peaceful. My family has another dog. That's their pet, little Dixie. She's three and a half pounds. Little Yorkshire Terrier. She runs the household, and every guide dog that I've had in the last 10 years knows it. If I'm walking the two dogs, my guide dog in the harness, and I got Dixie on the leash, Dixie has to be in front. And I tell her, no, you gotta let the guide dog do its work, because she doesn't know how to guide at all. But it's pretty funny. CNIB is into guide dogs. They're 100 years old. They started a guide dog program. They told me they want to make guide dogs for Canadians who live active outdoor lives and are in the city, both. And that's what Canada is. We're at the uh, home of the CNIB guide dogs, uh, the training centre, uh, just outside of Ottawa, about an hour west, uh, just near the town of uh, Carlton Place. This is the what was the indoor arena for uh, horse training. Um, we've got this property now, and in the very near future, this will be a, a really a world-class, state-of-the-art training center. I'm an outdoor person. A stick doesn't always work so well in the outdoors. Yeah, you can have your hiking poles and you can have your ski poles, but sometimes it's just great to have a dog to get you through the trails, get you down the dock, get you into those places where a stick just isn't gonna work so well. I need a guide dog that's tough, ready to rock and roll, and ready to give it its all. I think a lot of people understand that guide dogs help blind people get around, but I don't think they understand that every dog is different and every dog has its strengths and its weaknesses. It's all about finding the perfect dog for me. And that's what we're doing with this video series. We're going through all sorts of dogs, getting to know the dogs, their personalities, their strengths, their characteristics. And through that process, hopefully at the end, when they're all trained, I'll know which is the best dog for me. We'll come to that decision together. It'll be amazing. It's not common that blind people have a chance to meet guide dog puppies. My kids don't know it yet, but we're having some fun with puppies today. They're just getting in from Australia. They're on their way to Nova Scotia. They've got a stop over here in Ottawa at the CNIB Guide Dog School. Maybe someday they might be my next guide dog. Who knows? Over the past 32 years, I've had five great guide dogs. They're all different, they're all amazing, and um, they all have a special part in my heart. And I wish each one of them could have lived as long as I have, but that's not the case with dogs, which means getting a new guide dog every so often. It's a tough transition, but you gotta do it. My name is Karen Hanlon. I am the manager of canine development and training at CNIB Guide Dogs. Hello, puppies. Hi. Hey, they're at the door. They're here, you guys. <laughs> the 
puppies. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey. Hi. Hey, how are you? Come on Hi, in. Thank you. Oh my God, it's cold out oh, there. It's freezing. I'll let you close the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on in. Come on in. I don't want to squish a puppy. <laughs> There's puppies, right? Yes. It's very nice to meet you. You too, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm Lawrence. Uh, yeah, I've got my hands full here. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that fluff ball. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Caught. And these little guys have just come from Australia. Are they? From summer in Hello, Australia. Mike. Hey, Mike. To How winter in Canada. <laughs> A lot of people ask us why we get our dogs from Australia, and the answer is simply because CNIB Guide Dogs. We are such a young organization that we don't have our own breeding program yet. Um, we plan to do that in the future, but in the meantime, we wanted to ensure that the dogs that we got were the best quality we could possibly get. And then this is the other little girl, Aww. and she's yellow, so she's quite pale. Oh, look at this one! Her tail's going crazy. She's like, "Come on, and let's sit down and talk and get to know each other." And we got a hundred questions asked. Oh, well. uh, we do use uh, exclusively Labrador retrievers and Golden retrievers, and a cross of those two, simply because those are the ones that just tend to have the highest success rate. Karen takes care of all the uh, breeding and the. Uh, and the placement in the foster families, the selecting of the foster families where the puppies go and training those foster families, making sure that those one-year-old dogs that come back have the best training possible. So they'll start with uh, with just uh, the house training. They'll just get them used to the family, get them used to their new home, and pretty quickly they start okay. doing the main role, which is to, to socialize them. Yeah. So start taking them all over the place and get them used to anything and everything that they will be uh, exposed to as guide dogs. Yeah. What we would like to get back is a confident, happy, a uh, puppy that's ready to face the world. So they have been exposed to all kinds of different environments and situations uh, to prepare them for becoming a guide dog. So these puppies, they have no idea what they're supposed to do at mealtime. So we're just gonna start to teach them because when they're older, what they, what they will do is learn to sit and wait until the whistle blows. So they don't know how to do that yet. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There and if you, you go. keep your puppy at the bowl, so if they don't. start to go away, make sure they stay there so they don't go into each other's Listen bowl. to that. Listen to that sound. Okay. Good. Boy. Good. No. no. <laughs> this one really wants to yeah. yeah. We're really excited because we it, like we have this is the first time where we're actually like old enough to like, like enjoy the process of getting a new dog. Cause when we got our last dog, Moby, we were like, I was, I think five and you were, he was like, you were three. So we didn't really remember anything about getting Moby. So it's gonna be fun. Like we actually get to like live the experience for real. Karen, thank you so much. This You're has been really welcome. a great introduction to uh, the whole puppy process. Oh, we're so happy. I know you don't do this for everybody. Oh, uh, it's, with, well, it's a know. pleasure. And we had them here, and before they head off to their puppy raisers, it was nice to give you a chance to just meet them. And uh, I think it's important yeah. that people understand there is a process. Uh, you know, sure it, it, is, it's yeah. it's uh, it's all thought out. It's well calculated. Yeah. And it's everything's for a reason. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, it starts it starts at age eight. This My is goodness. Where, this is My where goodness. it all starts. And yeah. you can see now they've eaten. I bet they'll fall asleep in no time at all. They're starting to really settle down. <laughs> well, Karen just left with the four puppies, man, and I'll tell you, it was hard to rip them out of my kids' arms. I didn't even want to let them go. I, you know, it would have been nice if I could have raised one myself and to be my next guide dog. But what's the chance of me picking the right guide dog, the best match for me? Would have been, you know, one in a thousand. So that's why it's probably not a good idea that blind people raise their own puppies to be guide dogs, because you never know how that's going to turn out. My favorite puppy was uh, the black one. Yeah. The black one? Yeah. The black female? Mine too. She was my favorite. She seemed to like Dad, too. No, she no. seemed to always go on his lap. You have to make sure right. that you don't get into anything. <laughs> Where, are you so, uh... Where are you going? Where are you going? You're toy. Toy. It was great meeting Karen. My family sure enjoyed playing with the four puppies. Wish I could have kept one, though. We're down here by the frozen Rideau River. It's all about outdoor winter sports today. We're gonna start with some tobogganing with my son here, Theo, over our favorite hill. 
and then we're gonna do a little cross country skiing and we're gonna do some snowshoeing and we're gonna do it all with these young dogs and see what they think about all that. My goal is to introduce CNIB guide dog trainees to some of my favorite winter outdoor activities. In the past, I would train my guide dogs to do these outdoor activities myself. Now I get to train the trainers. First up is Lewis, an all black Labrador Golden Retriever mix. He's 13 months old and weighs about 30 kilos. Lewis has about three weeks of actual guide dog training under his harness. He's got a lot to learn. He sure seems playful. The second CNIB guide dog trainee joining us on this cold winter day is Sherman. Sherman is a yellow Labrador Retriever. He's 15 months old and weighs about 38 kilos. He also has just under a month of guide dog training. Sherman seems like a pretty chill dog. He's also quite tall, which is something I'm used to being six foot three myself. Today we're here with Lawrence, and uh, Lawrence is obviously very keen on the outdoors, does a lot of tobogganing, skiing, that type of thing. The important thing for us, when we're matching a dog, we want a dog that's going to fit in with his lifestyle. So I'm here today really with a couple of dogs to see how they react to the deep snow. Is this something that one of these dogs will uh, really enjoy doing? And if he does, we'll take you from there and do some training with him. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put this leash like that, make it the long. Yeah. I'm just going to loop it on my wrist like that. And then I'm going to take him up the hill. Are you going to come down the hill with him? Yeah, just not the whole thing, just a little piece of okay. it. Yeah, just to see what he thinks. Well, if he it'll be if... interesting for us to see how he reacts to it. Come on, Sherman. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. You want to do it again? Going up the hill, he was pulling real nice. Steady, wasn't jerking me, was following Theo just beautifully. Yeah. And coming down, he was just running without any tension in the yeah. leash at all. He's quite a fast walking dog. Yeah. You know, I'd, what I'd call a, a medium plus pace at, uh, at least. Yeah. And so now the thing to do is for us to, any dogs that we think might be possible matches for you, yeah. is to bring them into these sort of environments. Yeah. Get them familiar with it, because normally we'd be saying, keep out the deep snow. Sherman, definitely, he, he took to it. I think he's done it before, maybe. But he was definitely not a problem. Sledding with Sherman was pretty cool. I think he really enjoyed the activity. I'm sure with some practice and time, Sherman would follow me down the sledding hill without me even having to hold the leash. Our next activity is snowshoeing. As you're walking, the, yeah. the best advice I could give you is you get, get hold of the leash when you can. Yeah, and, and just yeah, give just it a little pull. Ge gentle tugs. Just, just keep them in, yeah. in line, yeah. I'm going to keep it, it right handy there. Yeah. They all get used to it. It's just Absolutely. a matter of practice, right? That's right. You know. He's sniffing at the back of the shoe, yeah. so. Yeah. Well, the thing to do is right. if there's any problems, Lewis, just, I'll, I'll be right behind you. Just give me a shout. All right. Sounds good. All Honey, right. we good? Let's go. All right. Come on, Lewis. All right. There you go. That's a boy, Lewis. Oh, no, come here, come here. Don't get in front. You you don't get the trail, buddy. I get the trail. That's just following someone who's walking. Yeah. He's not guiding, so that's quite nice. His tail's going, so he's obviously enjoying it. His head's down, he's having a sniff at everything. Well, he's not pulling, he's not trying to get in front, is he? There's Anne. Some training. Take too long to get him walking nicely. We'll get him to the property in the field, don't we? Yeah. All the snow there. Where's mom and dad, Lewis? Huh? You did good, buddy. Hi, Ant. Hey. Hi, Lawrence. Hey. Andrew. Hey, hi. Hi. Hello, Lewis. <laughs> this is deep snow here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like four <laughs> foot taller than me. You yeah? need you need snowshoes. <laughs> Oh, so he's telling me now. You're four foot tall. How did you find that? <laughs> That's excellent. He's been really like most of the time. If I pause, yeah. he pauses. Yeah. And and there was a little bit at the beginning where he wanted to. He wanted the trail. He wanted yeah. to get into Anne's trail. Yeah. And then he realized that he couldn't get into Anne's trail without getting into my toes. So he surrendered the, the trail to me. Yeah. And that's always a tussle, eh? Who gets yeah. the trail? Who's going to have an easy life? Yeah. Who's going <laughs> to have an easy it was life? It's interesting when you set off. He's in deep snow. Yeah. And then it suddenly clicked. If I walk behind Dan, yeah. I'm on hard to pack snow. Yeah. So that's when he started working a bit nicer. So yeah, snow is deep. Yeah. It's up to his boy, chest. Lewis. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he he worked hard. He yeah. worked hard, but he didn't ever. He tried really hard not to get my way. Yeah. Like he was really good just staying at the side and you know a little bit in front, a little bit to the side, yeah. not pulling too much, not pulling much. You know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes he'd see something and he'd want to go see it, but really he was very attentive. Yeah. 
Lewis did very well with the snowshoeing. Even though Lewis and Sherman seemed like two totally different dogs in many ways, they were both quite comfortable in the winter outdoors. I like them both. Quite an unusual day for us, um, with the dogs as well. They're not used to this kind of environment. And we're asking a lot of these young dogs because we, we want them to behave. We don't want them pulling or dragging Lawrence anywhere. But at the same time, they're not guiding. There's no harness and there's no clues in the environment for what we're expecting of these dogs. Two great dogs. I'm, I'm delighted. I mean, you think how young these dogs are, yeah. the progress we've seen. Yeah. You know, yeah. by the time you got back to us, you're absolutely right. He, he could see us, he wanted to get back to us. But he was happy being with you. Yeah. And that's so important. That's, you know, almost the beginning of the bonding process, well, which can like take weeks. You know, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Top yeah. Class he's he's very easy going. There's lots of outdoor activities I enjoy doing in the winter. Next on my list is cross-country skiing. This is a this is a great training exercise for this. Yeah, guy. he was I promise he's never even seen skis before. Big shoes, yeah. big shoes, huh? So, uh, big yeah, shoes. I'll be behind you if you hear me shout. All right. No, he's interested. Yeah, he's he wants wagon. to know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take long for Sherman to remind me that he's still a very young guide dog trainee. Crack your child. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, big guy. Come here. Come here. To be fair to Sherman, this fall was more the fault of an icy patch. It's good. Oh, oh boy, here we go again. He's, he's Are you sad? Fine. Are you sad I'm falling down? Huh? We finally get skiing along nicely and. Well, Sherman had other things on his mind. Sherman, Sherman. Whoa, 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 hang on. Sherman, come here, come here. We're good. Good, he'll get out your way, there he goes, well done. That was really good. Cool. Oh, no, 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 no! Ah. <laughs> you can see that what, there's no way he can guide you here because you've got a big wide expanse. Yeah. There's no, there's no building line for him to, to stick to. Yeah. There's no curbs to aim for, there's no sidewalk. Yeah. So this, and he's not in his harness, so he's no, there's no attempt to guide you whatsoever. No. Well, what you need is to get him in this environment yeah. so that he learns not to be sniffing where every dog is peed. Because <laughs> uh, that's what he's doing. So he's I know, your left I know, I know. Trying to get you right. I know. But he's confident with that, mate. Yeah, and I've never yeah. seen this before. So yeah. for me, this is a new experience as it is for him. Cross-country skiing with Sherman clearly proves he's still at the very beginning of his guide dog training. Next up for cross-country skiing is Piper, a 17-month-old golden retriever who's nearing the end of his guide dog training. I'm hoping this time, things will go a little smoother. The protocol then is that you stay in the tracks, the dog's on your left. Yeah. You don't want the dog coming anywhere near the tracks in case he wrecks them. I don't want the dog pulling me, and right. I don't want the dog getting in front of me. Got if you. they're in front of me, they're gonna pull me. If there's yeah. always beside me or a little, just a little bit behind, they don't pull, right? Because okay. they're following then. Yeah. I'll let you get yourself rigged out, mate. Sounds good, buddy. Okay, see you in a minute. So I know where everyone is. All right, I'm set, honey. Um, don't forget, he's always used to being on my left and suddenly he's on my right, so Yo, don't worry. He might, he you might. You think he's going, just let him go, because I've right. got him. Yeah, I can just open my hand and then at least yeah, pop perfect. off. Yeah, perfect. All right, we're good? Okay, how exciting is this? All right. Nice and steady. A little shake, get rid of some tension. <laughs> and he's good to go. Oh, yeah. This dog has not pulled me off balance once. No, he's comfortable Absolutely here. Absolutely amazing. Good fella. Let's go find him. Come on, man. Good fella. Good boy, Piper. What a good dog. Good boy. Wait. Good we go. man. <laughs> oh, you can't I, beat that. I gotta give this guy a treat, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good That's boy. That's one happy dog. Good boy. So what, what was your reaction? I mean, I think that's great. What's, what's your reaction? How did you feel? He, this dog's fantastic. Excellent. I mean, he, he's just the perfect heel. He lets yeah. me know he's there, but he yeah. never pulls. Like, he, so you, even if he falls behind for a second to shake, he, he, as soon as he feels the tension in the leash, he catches up. And I, I love it, I love it. And I know, you know, if something happens, I break a pole, I break a stick, yeah. something happens, Dan, I need to get help. Yeah. I got the dog. Now, time for another of my favorite outdoor winter activities, ice fishing. 
I'm meeting up with Karen and Andrew on the frozen Ottawa River. Karen and Andrew brought two CNIB guide dog trainees. First, meet Vincent, an all-black Labrador golden retriever mix. Vincent is the brother of Lewis. Vincent seems a little bulkier and a little more serious. Our other guest is Dunstan, another yellow lab, and the brother of Sherman, who I had the pleasure of sledding with. Dunstan seems as chill as Sherman, about the same height, but a little more lanky. So, hey, let's go do some fishing. Let's drill some holes, see these dogs around the auger, and, uh, and see how they like fishing. Good I got idea. my buddy Jason around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, Jason! Pull out. Oh, well, there, all right, all right, man. All right, let's do it. All right, let's, let's go. go. All right, you're ready to go here. All right, all right. Throttles on. Throttles on. All yeah. right. Okay, Throttles you guys, on. this is going to be a little noisy. Okay. So just stay back with the dogs for a bit, and then just see what they think. I wanted to expose the two guide dog trainees to the sound of a gas ice auger. It's important that a guide dog not be scared or anxious due to loud sounds. Ooh. That's good. What do you think, you guys? No worries, no problem at all. Yeah, no, no is worries that right, at all. Eh? Yeah, they were around. He was running for yeah. it. Is that right? Yeah, eh? he just so wants to see what's down in the hole. He's Vincent, yeah. is there fish down there, Vincent? <laughs> Tell me. Turns out both Vincent and Dunstan are not bothered at all by loud sounds. Fishing is not catching. Fishing is waiting and hoping and passing time. When you were telling me that you're going to have, you know, you lead a very active lifestyle and yeah. you're always busy. Yeah, I, don't know. I didn't think you meant sort of sitting here for hours after hour, uh, just oh, with, with a fishing line, mate. That's, what were you saying? That you know. fishing is all about sitting around. This is a very relaxing <laughs> sort of day, if you ask me. I'm pleased how well Vincent and Dunstan did on ice. With so much to see on this flat, frozen landscape and with the noise of ice augers and snowmobiles, they both seemed quite at home. That's five great CNIB guide dog trainees I've had the pleasure of meeting in the snowy outdoors. They're each different in their own ways, but they all seem like they'll make great CNIB guide dogs. That's great, yeah. you guys. Thanks so much for uh, letting welcome. me do this test with the dogs and uh, to show this experience to them because it's important to me. And, hmm. you know, I think it's important to a lot of people that spend time on the ice. You can look around here and you can see it's quite a popular activity. You're not kidding. And there's cities like this all up and down the Otto River of just yeah. ice huts and ice anglers. And, yeah. you know, and they bring their dogs and their families and yeah. it's, it's something to do in the winter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Something new to us and new to the dogs. Very so much so. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Good effort. Good nice to meet you. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Okay, bye. Cool, Fantastic. Okay, well, safe journeys fishing. home. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. See you, boys. <laughs> After a long winter, we're back in the Gatineau Hills. My family and I will be meeting up with Andrew and CNIB guide dog trainees. How's things going with you? So far, so good. But the uh, the bad news uh, I have to tell you is that I don't have Vincent with me. What happened to Vincent? Vincent, unfortunately, has been withdrawn from the program. No. Yeah. When we were ice fishing with Vincent and, and I drilled that hole in the ice and he put his whole head down the hole to look. Right away I thought, there's a dog that's curious about fishing, right? Vincent had that little bit of a hunter's instinct. So uh, yeah, I kind of liked him. He's got, uh, it's not a training issues really, it's more temperamental <coughs> issues. So we just got to do what's best for the dog to be honest. Yeah. But I have got uh, some nice dog suits to have a look oh, at. Oh yeah, who'd you bring? Yeah. <laughs> with us today, is Sherman, Lewis, and Dunstan. We've got three dogs. We're gonna take them on the trail through the Gatineau Hills and just seeing how they heal. Do they follow? Do they pull? Do they, are they distracted? Do they wanna be out in front? All of these questions we're gonna find out. Anne's gonna lead the pack and I'll follow behind Anne and I'll, I'll switch dogs every so often with you guys. All right, let's do it. It's a big break from city sidewalks where they've been training for the last two or three months in the city with the buses and the trucks and all the traffic. Now they get to get out in the bush. They're excited, we're all excited, but the dogs are excited and Sherman wants to be in front. He's, he's a natural leader. Right at the beginning, you can hear Lewis uh, breathing heavy because he's desperate to get in front. Hey, hang on. Heel, Sherman, heel, heel. All right, come on, come on. After hiking with Sherman for a while, I switched over to his brother, Dunstan. 
done soon is a far more relaxed dog. Yeah. Wants to chill a little bit, see what's going on in the world, wants a coffee, yeah. watch the world go by. Yeah, let everyone, do, let, it, let someone else do the heavy lifting. Go and do all you want to do, then I'm going to take it nice and steady. <laughs> but he'll go all day. <laughs> okay, let's change. I'll take Lewis. Lewis, follow me. And now it's Lewis's turn. Yup. See, straight away he's keen to get going. I know, eh? He wants, uh, he's like, all right, where are we? Where? Always, I'm the boss and I want to be in front. <laughs> you now, once he's done the route yeah. and he knows it, yeah. he is a confident yeah. alpha male. OK, so long as a nice walk, that. That's good, I'm eh? Pleased with that, yeah. A few too many hills. You told me there was no hills. I've counted <laughs> at least three. So you've had a, a chance to walk, you know, all three dogs. Yeah. And. Uh, Really, with, with Dunstan, what was, your, what was your thoughts on Dunstan? You know, Dunstan's really just like, uh, hey, you guys run ahead and make sure the yeah. coast is clear. <laughs> yeah, he's laid back, hey. And then come to Sherman. Sherman is just beautiful. I mean, yeah. looking around and he wants to be in front of the pack. Yeah. What about uh, Lewis? Lewis is a little tag too, right? Like he's, yeah. he, him and Sherman would go toe to toe, yeah. I mean, in a race. And you, you know, they want to compete with each other. They each want to be in front. They each want to be the alpha male. They each want to show you who's boss. You know, it's, this is nothing about guiding. This is about playtime and about adventure. It's, uh, it's not a, it, I can't make any sort of speculation on what would be a great guide dog because there's no harnesses involved. I'm not going to discuss it in any detail. I've got ones that I think this would be a good dog for Lawrence. Well, we're not done yet. No, we're not. No. We've got some canoeing to do, my friend. Not me. <laughs> Off to Mooney's Bay to meet up with my good friend, Max Finkelstein, to do some canoeing. Andrew, this is Max Finkelstein. He's a nice good friend of mine. Hi, Andrew. This guy has canoed more of Canada than any guy walking or paddling around this country, I'll tell you. Max, thanks so much for... Uh, coming out and helping out with this. Okay, I know you're Lord. a dog lover and I yeah, couldn't have thought nothing. of a better person to do this with. So let's get him in the, uh, let's get him in the canoe then. Come on, Sherman. Jump. There you, there go. you go. All right, big guy. That was easy. Considering he's never done that before. Now we were in the hands of the gods. Okay, uh, Sherman, we're gonna go for a little ride. Are you ready to paddle there, yeah, yeah, Lawrence? Yep, yeah, all set. How's he looking, Max? He's sitting down, he's looking quite happy. Nice. Is he drinking out of the lake there? Yeah, he's drinking, yeah. <laughs> he's doing just fine, he's relaxed. Yeah. Okay, Sherman, come on. Good boy. Perfect dog. <laughs> Can't get much better than that. I know, eh? Like Considering it's... the first time ever in a canoe, I was well I, impressed. I, yeah, I, well, that really was fabulous for the first time. Yeah. Here's Lewis. Oh, you got Lewis. Okay. I've got Lewis. Yeah, very good. Very there good. he is. Keen to see us. Hello, Hello sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Want to get in there? Good boy. Okay. All the way in. Good boy. good boy. There. Oh, what a good dog. Yeah, he's he's not. He's moving a lot less. Yeah, less, less than yeah. Uh, Well, he's not drinking the water. No. Let's go. Let's just take this dog and go for a trip. Come on, you and me, Mac. You, me, and this, Lewis. This dog is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lewis. Out you go. Bad oh boy. I've got it, Max. Thanks very he's much. He's a natural. Yeah, he's a nice uh, dog, he, isn't he? He did oh, well, yeah. eh? He's yeah, a he was a natural dog. out there. I think the fact that, you know, you train your dogs not to jump over things, right? I mean, guide dogs should not be jumping over things. It's just bad practice to jump and have the blind person expect to jump after the dog. So they you know, step the, nicely. The, the interesting thing for me is that these dogs aren't even in harness. Yeah. So they're not guiding. So I wouldn't be too upset if the dogs were, you know, running a bit silly and having a bit of fun and playing with each other. That's They're, they're not working. Yeah. But to see dogs just responding to your voice and your gestures when they're just on the lead, yeah. I think that is absolutely superb. I'm chuffed to bits, I really am. I think it's been <laughs> top class, I can't tell you. Well, man, you should be proud. You are training truly Canadian dogs by the looks of things. It felt great to be back in a canoe after such a long winter. I'm super impressed how well both Sherman and Lewis did in the canoe. Hey, Theo, yeah. did you put the plug in the boat? What plug? The plug to keep the water from going in. Which one? <laughs> Theo, if you drift off, you know how to start the boat, right? Maybe. <laughs> Getting out on the water and fishing is a big part of what I do. Sometimes it's just to catch a fish to feed my family, and other times it's a catch and release fishing tournament. 
I've got three guide dogs in training from the CNIB here with me. People enjoy reading my articles and hearing me on stage when I'm speaking about fishing sustainably. My next guide dog needs to be able to behave on stage and on a fishing boat. We have both Lewis and Dunstan who have been with us on previous outdoor adventures. And for the first time, young guide dog trainee Marion. Marion is a 13-month-old Labrador Golden Retriever mix, and I'm told she has beautiful brown brindle legs. Welcome aboard uh, my boat. We're going to take these dogs out for a little Excellent. boat run and a little bit of fishing today. We're going to teach them how not to jump after lures. That's yeah. a common problem when you're fishing right. on a boat okay. is the dogs like to snap at the lures. Right. Right. And then uh, we'll introduce them to big motor sounds a little bit okay. and hopefully a fish. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Good thing I brought the big boat. Lots of room for three dogs, my son Theo, and four adults. The lake itself is pretty small, so there won't be any big waves or wind to contend with. So let's test these dogs out and see how they like a boat ride. Ready to All go. yours, Ready to Jason. Go. Hang on to your hats, you guys. Good dog. So, what do you think? So yeah, far, so worry. good. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, they're not concerned. It's all the three yeah. of them are saying they like to do it every day. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> job. Good boy. He's, he's looking at you, isn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. Good careless. <laughs> and what, and what, this is Dunstan? Yeah. He's, he's, he's nice and chipper this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's a lot better. Yeah, it's feel, it's, uh, looks like just, he's feeling good. Just, just needs that rest. Yeah. Hey, mate. We did the big motor test. Uh, what do you guys think? Are these dogs good for it? I just keep repeating myself, don't I? I'm just so impressed with these dogs. You know, yeah. they've all taken that in the stride. Yeah. Not one of them is concerned. You've got two sitting up, one lying down. You know, I've, I've had dogs that have reacted to different types of motors and bouncing and shaking and clacking and cranking. And you never know, right? You never know how they respond. So it's, it's you know, and it's disappointing when you get on a train and the, the dog's afraid of the train sounds yeah. or the wheel sounds on the tracks or on a plane and the dog's afraid of the motor on the yeah. plane. And you don't know until you do it. So you know what I want to do next is I want to get a, a lure onto one of the rods and I'm yeah. going to cut the hook off. Yeah. And I just want to pretend it's a lure and I'm casting yeah. and we're dangling in front of their noses. Right. Yeah. It's so important that these dogs never bite a fishing lure. And it, you hear about it all the time, right. dogs coming into the vet with a fishing lure in their mouth, because, you know, you play catch with a dog, yeah. with a ball or a stick, and they see that, and they, and they see they you moving your arm yeah. as if you're throwing yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. and they just think it's a, it's a toy. Now, time to assess how the dogs react to fishing. To be on the safe side, I've removed the hooks from the fishing lures. So this is, no, this is it? mine. Mine. <laughs> mine. No. 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 Good. No, mine. Good boy. Now, I'm nope. just going to turn nope. my back on him and let it hang there for a sec. Good dog. Good dogs. No, they're not. That's on not uh, taking the Sherman's bait. ears. What's this, mate? Lewis. Lewis. See? Good boy to Good. leave it. Let me cast back and forth a bit. Okay, yeah. Pretend to cast a bit. <laughs> First time I. Uh... Good. Good dogs. Well, I think they did well. Really well. Yeah. Good dogs. So, well, so good. if someone was doing that, yeah. like at home, yeah. what what would you suggest they do? Like if they were doing that at home with uh, with a lure and their fishing rod? I think I'd be. Uh, I'd always be suggesting they do it with two people. One's got control of the, uh, the dog, and one's offering the distraction. Yeah. And we sort of let them see it. We tell them no, and we give them a treat when they turn away from it. I, I would start using clicker training with that, to be honest. Not with these dogs, yeah, because they don't need it. But yeah. with our younger dogs. Well, not, you know what? I think that we're ready to catch a fish. Theo, well, I, I, you ready to catch a fish, buddy? Yeah. Well, it's all on your shoulders. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Let's find out how each young trainee reacts to a fishing lure being dangled at the end of a fishing rod. It would seem the three young trainees are more interested in wrestling with each other than they are in fishing. With three of us, Jason, Theo and myself, now fishing with real lures, I'm pretty confident it won't take long before we catch a fish. Oh, there's one. Fish on. Spot on that one. That's a good one. Theo, get the net. Hold him there. Wow. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Okay. All right, I got him under there. Okay, oh, okay. let's see. The dogs are all looking. Let, what all do you think, guys? Nose to nose. What do you that. think, boys? <laughs> a girl? What do you think, boys? Yeah. Oh, no looking. That's... Okay, I want you guys not to eat the fish, no, but uh, this is the fish. This is Mr. Look. Fish. This is why no. we come out here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Dyson's nope. most interested. He's yeah. wanting to kiss him on the nose. Lewis <laughs> is keeping his distance. He's right. not sure and about that. So hey. shall we let him go? I'm counting the 15 seconds here. I think yeah. that's enough. Yeah, okay, that's that's so. All right, Theo. Okay, net. net. All right. Let's get him back in the water, buddy. Here you go. Good boy. These are all great dogs. I'd have any one of these dogs on a fishing boat with me. Absolutely. None of them would cause any trouble whatsoever. They're not interested in the lures. They're not interested in the fish. They don't seem to get seasick. They're enjoying themselves. They're perfect dogs. I'm really happy on how things went with the dogs. All the young guide dog trainees are just so amazing. I'm just gonna get myself a stick, an old one. Anne's backing up the truck, and it's my job to direct her as we hook up our camper. A little bit this way, more this way. Keep coming. Whoa, hang on. Straight back, another six inches, straight back. Okay, we're good. With the dogs nearing completion of their guide dog training, I thought it would be a good time to take a little break with my family and go for a camping trip. Andrew and Karen allowed me to take one of the dogs with me. I had no idea which one it would be until they showed up with the pup. I knew too that the time was coming for Karen and Andrew to have that crucial conversation with the trainers on deciding which of those guide dogs would be my next guide dog. This has been a long process, trying to find the perfect dog or as close to the perfect dog as we can find for Lawrence. First time I met Lawrence, I, I uh, was at his home with, with little puppies. So to go from that to all the different uh, activities that we did with Lawrence, with the different dogs, it's been very, very interesting and, and, and it'll be really exciting to, to see how it, how it goes from this point. So we look back over six months, we had uh, Piper, a uh, nice dog, I think a little bit sensitive for Lawrence. Mm -hmm. um, Lawrence is a big dude, so yeah. you know we need a dog that's yeah. going to cope with that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think Piper was the one, to be perfectly yeah. honest. Lawrence, I keep saying, he's a big man. He likes to have a rough and tumble with his dogs. He likes to get on the floor and play with them. Some of the more sensitive dogs, that would really be irritating. Dunstan, biggest problem with Dunstan is that there's been some health issues. Mm -hmm. But if we can get those health issues resolved, and I'm hoping we can, mm. then that will make a fabulous guy. He'll make for an somebody. amazing. Yeah. He's got such good qualities, that dog, yeah. And then his brother, Sherman. You know, I'm watching Sherman in the canoe the other week, and uh, boy, oh boy, that it's dog did well. He was good. fantastic. Do you, do you As think? was. As was Lewis too, Lewis right? was good yeah. in the boat. I, I thought at one point, looking from the shore, that yeah. Lewis was asleep with his head on Lawrence's lap. In That's the, what in it the canoe. Like. That's what it yeah. looked like from the shore, <laughs> yeah. We're looking at dogs like Sherman, the size of that dog, thinking, you know, potentially this could really work. We look at Lewis, again, quite a tall, leggy dog, but with a great sense of adventure, always willing to please, always looking for something to do. So I think these two dogs are absolutely top-notch dogs. But we had uh, Vincent as well. I thought he was a good potential uh, for Lawrence, but unfortunately, there's been uh, some issues mm -hmm. and temperamental issues more than anything. And uh, that dog just does not want to be a guy yeah. dog. So he's going to be. You're going to be a good pet yeah. for somebody. You always get a dog uh, in any group that does not want to be a guide dog. Uh, there might be a temperamental reason behind that. They might be frightened of traffic. They might be a bit nervous or in crowds, whatever it might be. So we're down to? I think we're down to two. A to short list honest. of yeah. two. It's between Sherman and Lewis, and Lewis, isn't it? Yeah. Both very strong physically. They're young. They're big puppies. If you remember, Lawrence has got this problem with his left shoulder. Mm -hmm. So if there's a lot of tension on the leash or on the yeah. handle, that could potentially yeah. be a problem. Lawrence's uh, temperament, uh, the way he plays with his dogs, the way he works with his dogs, tell us the kind of dog we need to be getting for him, which is a big, strong dog. Blind people just don't walk on sidewalks, right? You know, they just have roads and gravel roads and paths and boats and docks and things like that and banks. And, you know, bringing dogs out of their comfort zone is not a problem. They're brilliant, they're malleable, they're young, they're courageous, they're curious, not a problem. We need to be able to create dogs that serve all people. So those people don't have to come out of their communities, move to the city to get a guide dog and live in the city because they can't bring their guide dog back to their rural communities. It's time for Lewis to experience his first campground dog park. 
make some friends, and have a well-earned run. Theo and I have some firewood to chop and a campfire to get ready for tonight. Chopping firewood takes a sharp axe. There's ways to do it without cutting yourself. I hold the piece of wood with one hand, then stabilize it, and with the other hand, line up my axe and swing away. I also have my own way of building a perfect campfire. So there's lots of different ways to build a fire. There's teepees, there's log cabins. I like to use a, a kind of fire making they use in uh, wood stoves. So you take three pieces of, of sort of equal size, always three, lie them side by side by side, a little bit gapped apart. And then I'll put a couple more in because I can fit them in here. I'll just add a couple more, not choking it out too much. Then you take your sort of medium sized pieces and you sort of cross them over. So you, you're just sort of building up a crisscross sort of affair. And it's like a candle, right? I mean, you start a candle at the top. Everyone thinks you have to start a fire at the bottom. That's wrong. You don't need to start a fire at the bottom. I always try to put the uh, little pyramid-shaped pieces of wood pointing up. And as I'm adding layers, I'm getting smaller and smaller. Nice thing is we get the wick, we light the wick, and then it just burns down. We don't have to touch it. And for me, not having to touch it, not having to move it and put all the pieces together as it's catching fire. I light it, we step back, 20 minutes later, it's a perfect fire. You know, my family has been bugging me all for the last six months. Lord, which dog? I like this dog, or I like that dog. And you know, it's hard not to have favorites. It's really hard. So I'm looking forward to finding out which dog it's gonna be. All right, it always starts slow. <laughs> it's getting dark and time for the family to gather around the campfire, roast some marshmallows, and no doubt plenty of talk about which guide dog Karen and Andrew might pick to be my next guide dog. It'll be number five in our lifetime together. Yeah. 17 years. Yeah, in 17 years, five dogs. I, I, I don't, I've never experienced this because I'm not, I don't have a guide dog and I'm not blind, but with a guide dog, it's, I think it's less servant master and more like partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they don't know I'm blind. No, they don't know you're blind. No, they just know that if I bang into stuff, I bleed and then they feel bad. And uh, they want to avoid that. Dogs are amazingly sensitive and they want to avoid unhappy moments. So that's why they sort of guide me around so that we're all happy at the end. Everyone's happy. I enjoy getting up early and cooking everyone a hearty breakfast using this oversized grill. Over the last six months, I've met a lot of CNIB guide dog trainees. I was able to introduce them to many outdoor activities from snowshoeing to canoeing. I fell in love with each and every one of them at one point or another. Today is the big day. The excitement has been palpable for about uh, five, six, seven days. Lawrence had to say, stop it. We can't bring our hopes up. We can't try to guess which dog it's going to be. I'm gonna find out from Karen and Andrew which of the young guide dog trainees is gonna become my next guide dog. I'm waiting for Andrew and Karen to arrive. It's killing me. Hi, Lawrence. It's Andrew. Andrew, Hi, how's mate. it going, Hi, man? Very well, thank you. Good, man. This is a, a, a huge day. We have uh, made a decision. Yeah. We have uh, talked at length with the instructors. Yeah. And we've looked at all the issues that we are thinking that are going to affect you, because you have a, a very different lifestyle to many blind people. You're out all the time. You're doing all these exciting adventures. So we're trying to find a dog that will cope with that that will fit in with your family, fit in with the kids, fit in with everything. Yeah. And we've made a decision. All right. So, are you ready to see this new dog? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I've been ready <laughs> since uh, six months ago. I just want to keep teasing you <laughs> no, about no, it. Right? I, I don't want to no, tell no. you which one it is, but yeah. are you all ready? Uh, yeah, I you know what? So. It's, yeah. it's, it's a change, right? I'm yeah. switching gears here yeah. from being like big brother to Absolutely. all these dogs. Now I'm Absolutely. like a blind guy getting a new guy dog. Absolutely. I'm at that I, mode, man. It's I, like, I, I get I, emotional I, about it, man. Oh, I really man. do, because I think this should be yeah. one of the biggest days of your life. And all these lots of things go on. Yeah. But this should be such a, a buzz. It's like Christmas yeah. and birthdays all at once. So I get choked up, I really do, after yeah. all this time, I still yeah. do. But I think the best thing to do now is to uh, bring the dog out, eh? So Karen's got the dog somewhere? She's Karen, around here with Karen the dog? Karen's got the dog <laughs> and she's okay. gonna bring it out. Karen, bring it out! Come on, Karen. <laughs> here he is! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this place is safe. <laughs> there we are. You've got Lewis. Guy? Oh, oh, Lewis. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> this place is safe. Oh, oh, good to see you. Good, good to see you too, sir. <laughs> this is what we want. This place is safe. He thinks the world of you. It's a nice dog, yeah, man. I'm I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> so I do want to say, I wish you all the Karen, best. Oh, 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 I have to say, I've been so keeping my emotions checked for so long, right? And not trying to engage or bond with any of these dogs. You know, I had to put my needs aside and think about the guide dog school and the guide dog program. I'm lucky I got a great wife and great kids there. They're, you know, they got my back. But it's not the same, right? It's not the same as having a dog and just being able to go. You know, they say it's your best friend for a reason, right? They're not lying. <laughs> and in my case, he's not only my eyes, he's my left arm. And when I lose him, it's like losing my left arm. It's just gone and you miss it so much. I think Lawrence is just looking forward, number one, to tell me, hey honey, hey kids, okay, I'm going, I'm on my way, I'm just, I'm out, see you later. <laughs> Did you have any clue that this might be the dog? I was kind of hoping for, it would be Lewis. Oh, I have to oh, admit, goodness. after the, after a few things, like the when we had the canoe out yeah. and, Ma and Max said, Lawrence, yeah. you know, and he's, yeah. we had the different, he was, yeah. oh, that Lewis is, he's yeah. a born natural. Yeah. He's an adventurer. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I think. And yeah, I, and he Lewis likes going to new that. places and yeah. doing new things, and he's an adventurer, yeah. and he's like, yeah, like yourself. I mean, Lawrence could have had his heart set on a different dog. Dog. His family might have had their heart set on yeah. a different dog, but as it turns out, I mean, you could see the reaction. Yeah. The dog is under saying the dog was excited and happy, and they were thrilled. Well, I can't wait to get him in the harness, you know, and, uh, and be in the harness with my dog. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to getting my freedom back and my, you know, my, my independence that, in that way. Welcome home, buddy. And now buddy. the hard work Welcome begins. Home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is, the, this is the, just the end yeah. of the introduction, right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, this is the end of my time with all the young guide dog trainees, but it's the beginning of my training with my new guide dog, Lewis. Got to bring your treats, huh? Bring your treats, because we're gonna go work, huh? <laughs> Let's get some breakfast first. <laughs> you need to go out? Come on. Do something. Now. Lewis and I have just finished two solid weeks of training with the CNIB guide dog trainer. We've had another couple weeks of practice. We have been working hard to be certified as a guide dog team, and today's the big test. Lewis isn't perfect. After all, he's still a dog. I can't help feeling a little nervous, though. Karen and Andrew will be assessing our progress. Even if we do graduate today, it doesn't mean Lewis's training is over. It takes time for a guide dog to learn the many different routes I walk in this city. Never mind mastering all the outdoor activities I do. Today, though, it's all about the city. Guys? Hey, hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good, 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 good. good. Hi, How are you Lauren. doing? Yeah, there. Absolutely. Lewis, Lewis, look who is there. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You look nice. <laughs> Yo, guys, I'm really looking forward to today. Yeah, what's what the plan? Well, we're going to do, uh, we're going to get out through the university, along the canal, into the right. Byward Market and then back out of the market, uh, back into my neighborhood. I uh, had a nice little spot I picked out for us to have some lunch and then Brilliant. hopefully uh, get some feedback from you guys and, and you'll be impressed by oh, all our I'm hard sure work. I will be, I have no doubt about that. I want to get fantastic. my, I want to get certified, man, well, so I can uh, get you guys off my back. Oh, what we've seen so far, it looks great. I mean, yeah. that was that was amazing seeing yeah. you you're running together. You both just look so happy. Yeah. Big yeah. smiles yeah. on your face yeah. and a big smile on his face. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, good, isn't no. it? You see a dog laughing like that. Tail's going, he's yeah. a happy dog. Well, shall we get going then? Absolutely. All right, yeah, let's do it. Let's crack okay. it over there. Okay. Come on, Lewis, let's show them what we can do. Good boy. Steps. Good boy. Okay, let's go. Forward. Good boy. Good boy. We made it through the university campus and across the Rideau Canal. Once we get across these busy roads, the sidewalks are going to become a lot busier. Okay, Lewis, forward. Lewis, right. Let's go. Find the curb. That's a boy. Okay, Lewis, left. That a boy. Where we go? 
Okay, come on, Lewis, forward. Ottawa's Byword Market is where I like to buy my sustainably harvested fish and organic vegetables. The sidewalks here are narrow and congested, which means Lewis and I have to slow our pace way down. Lewis's job is to keep me from bumping into people while ignoring all the different smells and distractions. It's a lot to ask of a 21-month-old brand new guide dog, that's for sure. Right, find the steps. Steps, steps, right. A little bit further, right. there you go. No, right there. What's this? Good boy, good boy, forward. Good boy. Find me Maybe a chair, a table Lewis, right. right, find a chair. Find a chair, find a chair. Perfect. Good boy. I was absolutely blown away by how he worked, particularly through the marketplace. Yeah, I... um, because it was so crowded, he's so young, there's yeah. so many distractions, dogs, smells, loads of people around. Uh, you just worked as a team so well together through there. I find he's, um, he's smart, yeah. but he's also emotionally very resilient. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so, you know, I know like if there's pressure going on, he, ra he rises to the challenge and yeah. he doesn't collapse. Like he doesn't cave into the pressure. He, he can take it, right? He can take it and yeah. you know, it's like a bit of a water off yeah. a duck's back with yeah. him. Man. And He's you, just... you could see that on that one stretch where he was walking a really wide sidewalk yeah. and suddenly he realized the whole sidewalk was blocked by scaffolding. Yeah. yeah. So he looked at it and some dogs that aren't confident enough that maybe don't have as good initiative as he has, might have just stopped, look up at you and say, what do I do now? Yeah. But you just told him, come on, find the way, sort it out. And he looked and he used his, his, his brain, his yeah. initiative, yeah. came across to the right to the curb. Yeah. You told him to go, he walked down the road as far as he needed to. Very confidently got up on it, turned right. He heard the praise from you yeah. and he was so pleased with himself. Yeah. And I think if we come and see him, and we will, in 12 months, yeah. you know, you think today everything's lovely, everything's wonderful, but just imagine 12 months, he knows all your routines, you know all his routines, you've settled in together. Uh, it's different again, it'll just get better and better and better, and it's all this positive reinforcement that you're talking about. I want to tell you this, I mean it sincerely, I am delighted to give you your ID certificate. Oh, yeah? With your you're picture. Kidding? You do look guilty on it, you should have a number around you. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> top class, mate. Let me pass that oh, over to you. Man, thank and let you me so be the much. First, and I mean it sincerely. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, congratulations, top class effort, Lawrence. Man. Absolutely Absolute top Lewis, brilliant. We got our card, buddy. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. It's a huge deal. <laughs> we got our official CNIB guide dog ID card. Lewis and I could now go anywhere we want. Now I need to test Lewis to see how he does outside the city. Okay, Lewis, let's pack up here, buddy. Got your bowl. Got your collar with your bear bell. All right, you need that, man. Don't want to get eaten by a bear. Your tick puller. Hopefully, we won't need that. But, and what? Oh, a oh, little bit of treat for you yeah, when you're doing really good. We're good? We're good? We're good. We're going to go to their adventure today. Ah, Woohoo! I don't think this is the right coat. I put on the wrong coat. Now, this is my old green coat. He's been in boats and canoes already, and he's camped. But this is going to be way out in the bush. And we're going into bear country and wolf country and moose country. Ah, moose. Should be interesting. My little compact dog. This is Lewis's real first test. He's never been on a plane before. He's never been into the backwoods before. He's never been away from home on, for Lewis. multiple days at a time before. So there's many firsts for him on this adventure. I'm looking forward to getting back into the bush myself and just reconnecting away from the sounds of the city. It's so nice when I can decompress my hearing and just extend it out without the worry of harsh sounds. All right, Lewis. Good boy. Find inside. Lewis and I are off to Northern Ontario for our first real wilderness adventure in the boreal forest. This is my first time flying with Lewis. He sure seems comfortable on a plane and now for a three hour drive north of Sudbury on logging roads. No sidewalks up here, just deer, moose, bear and wolves. Yeah, you're bear proof now, you're bear proof. <laughs> you ready to go? Ritchie Falls Resort has been in operation for over 100 years. 
It's now owned and operated by a nearby First Nations community. Lewis and I are fortunate to have Matthew Al as our guide for the next few days. He'll also be sharing with us the Indigenous knowledge of his community, as well as the changes his people are witnessing to the surrounding forests and lakes. Forward. There you go. Good boy. Lawrence. Hey, how you doing, Matthew? Very well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to well, see you. thanks for having me up, man. Thank you for coming. This, this is Lewis. Hello, Lewis. Yeah, he's the new guy. He looks like he's anxious to get out there in the field. We are, yeah, we are. I think what we're going to do this morning is we'll probably head to a small little remote lake. It's an unassuming lake. There really isn't a name for it. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those lakes in in around this area that uh, is plentiful with uh, with bass. Perfect. So and yeah. there, that's a there's lots of those, eh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we can get a little meal of those together, no I'm problem. I'm certainly hoping so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what? A... Knock on wood. But yes, that's the game plan. <laughs> All right. Matthew, Lewis, and I travel as far as we can go in his four wheel drive pickup before heading into the forest on foot. Beautiful walk through the forest. It was really nice. Really set the mood. There's not a lot for deer to browse on in this forest here, right? Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, there, there isn't much food for deer to eat here. And the two, if you look at the species, uh, the technical name I think for the deer is Odocialis virginianus. Yeah. Um, they don't cohabitate so well with moose. Oh so, yeah? Yeah, so where you see healthy populations of deer, you see a decline in moose population. Yeah, really? Yes. So moose are okay. They like this kind of forest. Absolutely. This is moose forest. This is very. Uh, this is very traditional area where a moose would go through. I mean, it's a perfect transitional zone. You have plenty of water around here, plenty of food, plenty of browse. So yes, this is an excellent area for moose. Have you had some forest fires up here? Um, smaller ones that have been contained. Nothing that has been really uh, detrimental to the area. Do you think it's getting hotter the summers up here? Drier? Well. I definitely see a change. I know my people talk about it all the time. Yeah. Water levels fluctuating, temperatures fluctuating. Yeah. You know, before you could pretty well set the seasons by a clock. Yeah. And now it seems that uh, things happen so sporadically that it's hard to actually um, predict or even determine, you on. know, when a season will begin yeah. and when a season will end. Here in the middle of nowhere, came to this gorgeous little lake. One tiny little trail to get there, you wouldn't know there was any humans around. Matthew tells me this lake was recently taken over by smallmouth bass. Lewis seems to be enjoying himself here. After a morning of hiking, canoeing, and fishing, it's time to meet up with Kyla Owl. Kyla's in charge of preparing a shore lunch featuring a fusion of indigenous and European ingredients. Bannock made with wild blueberries, fried potatoes and fresh fish, and tea made from chaga, harvested from nearby birch trees. Ah, the sound of Ritchie Falls. Won't be long now before Lewis and I are snug inside a warm, dry cabin. The sound that that waterfalls comes down and the, the first snowfall of the year is just making is it... Is it snowing? It is. It is. It is. <laughs> It's just making it an absolute <laughs> magical moment. Oh I mean, my goodness. what a way to experience an October uh, day. Matthew, this has brought me full circle, man. Like I started this whole thing with this dog uh, project, you know, being big brother to all these young pups who wanted to become guide dogs right. and sharing with them my knowledge of the outdoors, right? I started in the winter and now it's winter. That's great. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. And you know, what do you think was the most memorable part for Lewis? You know, I have to admit, when just coming on the plane, I wanted to see what he'd do about the plane, and it turned out it was no big deal for him. And the van ride, no big deal. And the gravel and everything. But I think walking through that spruce forest uh, with you, and just the smells and the quiet and the, it's something I hadn't done with the dog, is just to be in that sort of uh, intense forest type situation. Normally we're on the water, like right. we're at boat launch, water, out on the water, back to the boat launch, into the vehicle and back home again. And whether it's a canoe or a boat or whatever, it's, we don't spend enough time in the forest. So it was, that was magical and explaining to me the trees and the, uh, the, the, the shaga and all of that, you know, all the, the life 
and how it gives life to all these different animals. I think, I think he appreciated that. I did appreciate that for sure. You know what? We appreciated uh, having both of you here. Yeah. What an experience. And just to get out in the environment and see you two work together, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The hospitality here at Ritchie Falls uh, Lodge is just above and beyond anything you possibly imagine. It's interesting, I, I've never really thought about a guide dog school training guide dogs to be in the outdoors. It's something I just did with my guide dogs. To be able to influence and shape a new guide dog program that's gonna be across Canada, it's been a tremendous opportunity for me and uh, a way I hope will help other people enjoy the outdoors like I do. Lewis is with me. All the other dogs, I'm told, ended up in really cool jobs. They are all across Canada. Reliable Piper lives in Ontario with Larissa as her guide dog. Dependable Daisy now lives in British Columbia, where she guides Sarah. Big Sherman now lives in Nunavut as Noah's guide dog. Gentle Dunstan is well on his way to becoming a CNIB ambassador dog. Curious Vincent was withdrawn from the program and now lives with a loving family in Ontario. And Loyal Marion lives in Manitoba as Tracy's guide dog. I've learned that as much as Lewis likes to walk quickly, he's also a very careful guide over rough forest trails and rocky shorelines. He also has a very brave heart. Not once has he shied away from an adventure. Simple things like fishing below Ritchie Falls, just like I did when I was a kid and still had sight. Losing my sight over the years has meant giving up a lot of things. Maintaining my connection to nature is important to me. Having Lewis at my side means it's possible for me to continue as an outdoor enthusiast. Thank you, Lewis, for agreeing to be my new eyes on the world.